Hello everyone and welcome to another really wild game uh, from day one of the knockout section of the uh, Earthings Masters. Uh, a wonderful game between Levon Aronan and Hikaru Nakamura uh, and uh, well features the London system so you know it's going to be uh, a lot of fun. Uh, without further ado let's check it out. I was going to show it yesterday I uh, couldn't get a uh, I didn't have the chance so I'm showing it now before uh, the start uh, of day two. So without further ado let's check it out it's quite a quite a wild one. Uh, Levon with the white pieces uh, over opens with d4. Sorry about that. Uh, we have knight to f6 uh, and now knight to f3. Uh, by Levin we have uh, d5 by Nakamura and now bishop to f4. So Levin goes for the London system. Uh, we have e6 and now comes e3. Preparing to develop the light square bishop, bishop to d6 and already uh, we have a lot of fun here. Bishop to g3 and knight to e5 are the most common uh, moves uh, in this position, but Levin goes bishop to b5 check. And it doesn't really make sense uh, why would you do this, because the bishop can be easily kicked away, uh, but it's to, to create very little imbalances in the position and to throw uh, Hikaru off guard and maybe into some unknown, uh, uh, unknown theory. So here you could defend, you, you could block with the bishop, the bishop to d7, but then if you do this, white can just go back and then you have kind of a weird bishop on d7 maybe. Uh, so what, what also you could do is maybe block with knight to c6, uh, but Hikaru actually blocks with knight b to d7, and this is now a new move in the position already from move 5. Uh, so uh, let's see what happens here. We have c3, strengthening the center, and now castles by Hikaru. We have knight b to d2, and now queen to e7, just continuing development. Uh, knight to e5 uh, and now comes knight to e4. So both players uh, put their knights on excellent central squares and here uh, 11 trades. Knight captures, pawn captures and queen to c2. Now threatening to pick up that the doubled pawn and Hikaru defends it with f5. So this kind of weakens the e6 pawn but it's a, it's, a, it's a very strong setup because it's very hard to reach this e6 pawn for white. And this is incredibly strong and since all of these pawns are on light squares here uh, it doesn't uh, seem all that likely that this light square bishop will do, be doing all that much in this game. So here 11 just trades it. Bishop captures, we have bishop captures and now h4. And this is something you'll see very often uh, in the London system. White will put a knight on e5, start pushing that h4, h5, h6 pawn up the board, uh, and maybe not, not even castle. Uh, so here, bishop to b5, preparing that bishop to d3 move, uh, and here a4. Levon even uh, encourages Hikaru to go for it. But first you have to remove the defender of the d3 pawn. So bishop captures uh, uh, on e5, we have bishop captures, and now bishop to d3. Attacking Levon's queen. Queen to b3, now putting pressure on b7. Also, the e6 pawn is now kind of exposed. And b6, Hikaru defends it like this. Also prepares c5 to strike in the center. Uh, because the white king is still in the center of the board. And Hikaru's king is uh, all very nicely safe on the king's side. Uh, and now comes f4. And here, you kind of don't want to capture. If you capture, then captures rook is coming to g1. There's going to be a lot of pressure on the g file. Even if g6, h5 just breaks through. Uh, so here... After f4, we have h5 by Hikaru, now really uh, keeping an eye on the g4 square. This pawn is not coming to g4 anytime soon. And now Levin says, okay, now I'm going to play king to f2, and now my king will be very safe here. And here, Levin's plan is actually, because uh, he traded off both of the knights, and he has a bishop on this beautiful e5 square, the the uh, black slight square bishop is also not bad. But it's very hard for black to get his pieces anywhere near white's king, whereas Levin's plan is pretty much uh, clear. He wants to play rook h3, rook to g3, bring the rook up the board, and then the other rook will do the same. Rook h3, uh, rook h1, rook h3, and then rook to g3. And then he will have doubled rooks uh, on the g file and a whole lot of pressure here. And Hikaru he needs to figure out how to deal with this plan. So he plays king to h7. Uh, he wants to move the pawn to g6 so the bishop doesn't attack it, and then maybe defend the pawn from the, uh, behind with the rook. So rook h3. Uh, Levin continues with his plan and g6 now. We have rook to g3 and now Hikaru doesn't want to wait for Levin to just complete his plan so he strikes in the center. Another very principled idea uh, because uh, whenever your opponent uh, strikes on the king side you want to reply by striking in the center and vice versa. So here uh, we have rook to g5. Levin makes some room for the other rook. This is like I said the plan. Rook h1, rook uh, h3 to, to g3, not f3. And now king to h6 uh, by Hikaru. 
uh, we have B, uh, D captures on C5, B captures on C5, and now even C4. And now uh, you can even uh, get the queen to this dark square diagonal, and uh, you know a, a lot of a lot of good things can happen here for White. So here Rook to F7, helping out with the defense, and now Queen to C3 as planned. We have Queen to B7 by Hikaru, uh, and now comes A5. And here Rook to C8, uh, adding another defender to the to the C pawn here. Uh, we have b3 and the queen to c6 now. So d6 pawn is nicely defended and Hikaru has to wait and see uh, how Levin will try uh, try to go for a breakthrough here. And Levin just continues with his plan, rook to h1. It's a rather simple plan, uh, I mean, and it's so very natural because, you know, everyone will always tell you, now the London system is bad, but then you, when you see someone really strong playing it, uh, you're like, wow, this is totally, you know, bulletproof because you have a dark square bishop on, on e5, which is uh, untouchable because black has a light square bishop and no knights. And you, you, your plan is very simple. Just bring the rooks uh, up the board to the, to the G file. So here Hikaru goes rook to b7. And uh, Levin just continues with his plan of rook to h3, but there was a very sneaky move in the position uh, that Levin could have taken advantage of uh, here. So uh, even feel free to pause the video and try to find this sneaky idea uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting it as it's not very easy. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's either g4 or bishop to d6 uh, or rather it's both you have to play both of those moves point is after g4 of course you cannot uh, grab with this pawn because h5 is just uh, you know crushing so black will have to capture with the f pawn and now bishop to d6 just crazy stuff uh, <laughs> you give up the piece uh, so so to prepare queen coming to f6 and then you want to put a lot of pressure here and here black has to be very careful how to defend you have to try something like maybe you cannot touch the bishop but it's very hard for uh for black to even uh make a move here uh because uh rook captures on c5 is coming that c5 one is very vulnerable but i'm just going to show what actually happens uh, after this because this might might as well be lost for black but it's very funny if black actually captures then queen f6 threatens checkmate and it doesn't matter if any of the rooks come to help out for example rook g8 you just capture on h5 with check uh only move is now king captures on h5 and queen to g5 is checkmate so there's a lot of poison in the position. So after this rook to b7 idea, uh, Levin could have gone for g4 or this, but it's a, it's a rapid game. Of course, the players cannot find all the moves. So rook h3, he just continues with his plan. It's not like Hikaru can do anything about it. And rook to g8 by Hikaru. He now starts defending the g6 pawn. Rook h to g3. And now uh, queen, uh, king goes back to h7. Uh, we have queen to c1, Levin now wants to play queen to d1 and put more pressure on the position, and queen to e8 by Hikaru, now adding another defender to the pawn here, and now queen to d1. And this is where the magic really happens uh, as, uh, well, uh, uh, there, there, there's danger in the position definitely, but Hikaru here played rook to d7, and now his position is lost. So feel free to pause the video and figure out why the position is now lost. Again, well, I give you a couple of seconds, uh, and this is the last time in the video. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting that you actually win black's queen. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's uh, actually rook captures on g6. And the point is now uh, you have to capture with the queen. You cannot capture with the rook because if you capture with the rook, you get queen to h5 check. And now you don't have rook to h6 because the queen, uh, sorry, you don't have rook h6 because the queen hangs. So you have to play king to g8 and then it's just a very sneaky rook captures on g6 check king f7 queen h7 check you have to go up the board and now of course rook to g8 is checkmate so that's not happening here so uh, while this is a very interesting after this rook captures in g6 move he had to capture with the queen and then his position is just lost but there's a brilliant defense only one move uh, prior to this instead of hikaru's rook to d7 move uh, Hikaru could have gone queen to f7 and now the same idea doesn't apply uh, but now you know why because now the queen is defended and now if you were to try the same thing for example rook captures here now you can actually capture with the rook rook captures queen captures and now you can block with uh, rook to h6 because the queen is defended and black is just winning here so it's a very very uh, you know small difference but uh, you know 
it, it it basically you know just uh, loses the game for black uh, the way Hikaru played it. So rook to d7 bad, queen to f7 good. So Hikaru played rook to d7, and now uh, Levin's sacrifice is of course well worth it. So he captured on g6. Now Hikaru has to capture with the queen, and now rook captures on g6. Uh, we have king captures on g6, and now king to g1. Now Levin has a queen and the bishop uh, against two rooks and the bishop and it seems like black should have the uh, enough material to counter uh, white but uh, 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 those are bishops of opposite colors and the light square bishop will not be able to oppose uh, the dark square bishop and it's white who's attacking here make no make no mistake so here uh, we have a6 by black and now king to h2 uh, Levin just improves the position of his king rook to b7 and now queen to a1 even giving up the rook here now you can set up some very deadly uh, traps like maybe bishop to h8 followed by queen to f6 uh, but hikaru goes for rook capture some b3 and now you can even make a quicker uh, queen lift queen to a4 now attacking the rook also preparing to bring the queen up the board we have rook to b1 it's very hard for black to organize an attack if you could get your for example rook here you can because the bishop is there and somehow utilize the rooks then maybe you could do something but it's very hard queen to d7 by 11 and now bishop captures on c4 grabbing that pawn but queen e7 and now uh, the queen is, uh, can come to f6 to g5 and there's not much for hikaru to do he played rook b to b8 but he was also in this position after playing rook b to b8 on move 38 that hikaru nakamura resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. Levin can just play queen f6 check, for example, king h7, queen f7 check, and now it's game over. King h6 and bishop to f6. This is the star move, and there's no defense now. Uh, whatever you play, bishop to g5 is coming. Doesn't really matter. Rook g6, bishop g5 check. You have to give up uh, the rook, and now f captures uh, will be checkmate as the king has nowhere to go. So uh, after rook beat to b8, uh, the game ended and uh, a wonderful victory for Levon Aronan. And he's the only one who got a victory yesterday. Uh, other three games ended in a draw. So it's Levon who wins the first match. And now Hikaru needs to win the second one. Uh, so we'll, we'll see what happens uh, in, in today's match. Uh, so yeah. Uh, that's uh, the game. I do hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, really uh, a wild one. And as you can see, uh, not a very timid opening that London system. It seems like black was uh, black needed the uh, like uh, engine precise plate to, to defend this position against, uh, you know, Le Eleven's onslaught. Uh, but yeah, uh, again, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Bakis Pur, uh, Seth Jeffson, Jan Cameron Mowat, Antoine Leboya, and Joseph Bassett for contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing uh, the coverage uh, of the second day uh, of the Earthings Masters, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.